2 Kings chapter 8. Then spake Elisha unto the woman whose hand of whose son he had restored to life. And that's back in uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. Arise, go thou and thy household. And sojourn wheresoever thou can sojourn. For the Lord had called for a famine. And it shall also come upon the land seven years. Now there was a famine in, I'm not saying this is the time, but there was also a famine in Ruth 1.1. 1, 1. And that's in the time of the judges, Israel's doing wrong. And whenever one of the things that God does to the nation of Israel and that you find throughout the Bible, there's a famine and it's because of sin. So here's another famine. <clears throat> and we're going to kind of date this famine, but already we see ourselves after 2 Kings chapter 4, after we go there, chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, and I want verse number, oh, 34. And he went up and laid upon the child and put his mouth upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth. We discussed this. His eyes upon his eyes, his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. They returned and walked the house to and fro, and went up, and stretched himself upon him. And the child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. There's the resurrection, a dead child. That is, okay, that's already happened by chapter 8. We're going to date. It's after chapter 4. And the woman arose and did after the same the man of God. Now look at this woman's obedient. This is the same woman that told her husband, let's build a little room for Elijah. He comes into the house. He comes to stay in that place. He says, listen, gather your family up. God's calling seven years. This is what this is a type of Joseph in the children of, of Jacob. It's gonna be seven years of famine. Get out. And a woman arose and did after the same the man of God, and she went with her household. And sojourned in the land of the Philistines seven years. Now Ruth chapter 1, they went into Moab. But there's never ever a, a recording that God spoke to them. This says that the famine got hard and they left. This woman is told by God. It doesn't tell her to go where. It just said, hey, there's famine. She could have gone down to Judah. But she went to the Philistines. And it came to pass... At the seven years end, now we're going to start dating. It's come the end of the famine. That the woman returned out of the land of the Philistine. And she went forth to cry unto the king, Jehoram. He's not named, remember. For her house and for her land. She's going to go to the king and say, listen, this is who I am. This is my family. My land has been taken over. My house has been taken over. That's mine. According to the law, that belongs to me. I want it back. And the king talked with Gehilzai, the servant of the man of God. Now that dates where we're at. Chapter 5, verse 27. Chapter 5, verse 27. Now we are after the resurrection, chapter 4 of the boy. 2 Kings 5, 27. The leprosy thereof of Naaman shall cleave unto thee, and unto thy seed forever. And he went forth for the presence a leper as white as snow. All right, what would be what has been the attitude? Chapter seven, verse two. Chapter seven, verse two. Uh, no, three. Excuse me, seven three. And there went four leprous men at the entering of the gate. That was Leviticus 13, 45, we said. And when we come to chapter 8, verse 3, here is, uh, here is verse 4, I, the servant of Elijah. He will become leprous. 
But if the king of Israel has already shut out four leprous men out of the city, this would be before Gehazi's become leprous because the king wouldn't have anything to do with them. So where we are, this seven-year famine has happened between 2 Kings 6 I'm trying no, wait a minute. Second Kings, I'm looking at the wrong page here. Has happened between Second Kings four and Second Kings five. There's been seven years famine. It mentions the child being resurrected. That's the mother of the child. And it speaks about he's speaking to Gehuzai. Gehuzai has not become leprous, and the city of Samaria has shut out the leprous people, so the king wouldn't be talking to him. So he's not a leper yet here. So what the Bible's done is not always in chronicle order. It will happen here, will happen there. And the writer of 2 Kings, we're going to put this here. But it's out of order. But that's nothing wrong. That's not, you know, throw the Bible in the garbage can. And it came to pass at the seven years end. That the woman returned out of the land of Philistines, and she went forth to cry unto the king for her house and for her land. And the king talked with Gehilzai, the servant and the man of God, saying, Tell me, I pray thee, all the great things that Elijah has done. Now, by hap, by chance, as you found in the book of Ruth, the king calls the servant and he says, Listen, you're a servant of Elijah, yeah? Tell me what he's done. I want to know. And it came to pass as he was telling the king how he restored the dead body to life, that young man that we just read about. So it's after that, that behold, the woman whose son he had restored alive cried unto the king for her house and for her land. And Gehazi said, my lord, O king, this is the woman, this is her son. Who Elijah restored the life. So he, here's, the, here's the story. The king and Gehazi are sitting there, wherever they're sitting, they're talking. Tell me something Elijah has done. Well, there was this woman, man. She built us a place. She built us a room, a table, a bed. And, you know, this one day Elijah said to me, what, what has been done for this woman? All the great things she's done for me. And we're just recapping chapter 5. And, well, time has passed, you know. The child got sick or something. We weren't there. The mother came to us. She grabs the feet of Elijah. I pulled her away. And Elijah's like, no, go. I certify. I went there. He's dead. There was nothing I could do with his staff or anything. He got kids dead. Well, next thing I know, here comes Elijah with that woman. And he takes the kid upon his bed in that room there. And I don't know what happened. I wasn't there. And boom, the doors are open and that son. Hey, King, what? There he is right there. There's that child just talking. While he's talking to the king, there, there's the woman. Wow. Now, is that not God and the providential of God's wisdom and God knowing for now? He's talking about, the, and the in walks the mother and the child that he rose right there. That was not planned. Gehazi had no idea. He could have told maybe thousands of men, hundreds of story of Elijah. And this happened to tell the story. And here comes that very woman and her son into the king to have a request. And Gehazi said, my lord, O king, this is the woman. This is her son whom Elijah restored. I bet she had a smile on his face. And <gasps> wow. And when the king asked the woman, she told him. <laughs> Are you the very woman? And then maybe repeat the story. So the king appointed her a certain officer. Gives her an officer. Let's go back to chapter 5 real quick. Let's see what happened here. Chapter 5. A little interesting thing here that I don't know if anybody missed. But uh, verse 13, uh, 413, excuse me, 2 Kings 413. And he said unto him, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is it to be done for thee? Was thou bespoken for the king or the captain of hosts? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. Well, look at that. 
Well, Elijah asked that woman, say, listen, I'll speak to the king for you. I'll speak, I'll get the cap in the army. He said, no, I don't need that. And boom, a couple of chapters away, she is standing in the presence of the king, and God has granted the king's requ her request to the king. Because she's done right. So the king appointed her a certain officer and saying, Restore all that was hers and all the fruits of the field since the day that she left the land, even unto now. Now, why do you say send an officer? Certify the matter is, who's ever living in the house or is on that property right now, I seal by the king. That's not yours. Move out. Eviction. And it's not even in minute domain because a woman owns that property. And I'm here certified by the king and by the office of, of Israel. She gets that property back. She gets that land back. Boom. It's done. I wonder if Elijah knew when he were ask her but that it would be called upon later by God. Okay. Now, verse 7. Chapter 8, verse 7. And Elijah came to Damascus. It's kind of funny because Paul was on the road to Damascus. And Ben-Hadad, here he is again, the king of Syria, was sick. And it was told him, saying, the man of God has come thither. Elijah's coming. And the king said unto Hazel, doesn't say who really who he is, take a present of thy hand. You're not going to get anything from the Lord for free. I'm just trying to think. Um, David said that. And go meet the man of God. Inquire of the Lord by him, saying, Shall I recover of this disease? I'm sick. Am I going to die? Am I going to get worse? Go to him. And he'll speak to God, and God will give an answer. There's faith. So Hazel went to meet him and took a present with him, even every good thing of Damascus, 40 camels burden. Now, I don't know how much 40 camels can, can carry, but that's a lot. And not only just a lot, the best good things of Damascus. Didn't give him cheapo. He didn't go to the, to the dollar store. He didn't go to a flea market. He got the best. And is bringing it to the man of God, Elijah. Now let's go to chapter 5, 26 again. Why do we keep going back to chapter 5? 5, 526. And I don't know how late this, what we're reading in chapter 8, has happened. Maybe all this has happened already. But chapter 5, verse 26. And he said to him, went not my heart, talking to Gazeli, when the man turned again from his chariot to meet thee, is there a time to receive money Is there, and to receive garments and olive lards and vineyards and sheep and oxen, men servants and maid servants? Gazeli stolen money from Naaman in the name of Elijah, and Elijah rebukes him, saying, this is not the time. So when is there a time? Chapter 8. Verse 9, and God pays Elijah, who did not covet, did not lust after, did not want anything of Naaman. God says, I'll give you 40 burnings of car caramel goods. From now, if this happened before Naaman, he's going to tell Gehazi, hey, I've already got enough. I've already got the presents. Either or, before or after. I've already been well paid. Or, okay, for your humbleness, Elijah, here's 40 camel bear. I don't know how many, how much a camel can carry. But there it is. And came and stood before him, Elisha, and said, Thy son, Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, and that's a respect, that's that father, Elijah, which Jesus says today, call no man your father. The prophets had respect back then. There is no respect of God's prophet or preacher today, and one idiot proved that. I mean, if you don't like God, if you got other gods, where it is, at least you gave time to listen to the man of God. Now, I'm not going to 
say I'm a man of God because people carry that all kinds of extremes, but I am called of God. I'm not a man of God. Absolutely not. I'm a son of God. I'm a child of God by Jesus Christ. But there's respect. Son ben Hadad, king of Syria, has sent me to thee, saying, Shall I recover this disease? Well, look at that. King Asa runs to the doctors and forgets God. Gentile ben Hadad, king of Syria, says, Hey, I'm sick. I'm not feeling well. Go get a prophet of God, the Lord Jehovah. All right, now, verse 10. Some people say this is a contradiction. And Liza said to him, Go say unto him, Thou mayest certainly recover. Mayest recover. It's not terminal. It's not deadly. It is something we can cure. How be it the Lord has shown me that thou shalt surely die. And he's going to be murdered. And let me give you an illustration I've been thinking about all day. You're in the doctor's office. You've been diagnosed. You've got a disease, whatever it is. Oh, doctor, how bad? Hey, rest assured, we can take care of this. Okay? We can do it. Proper treat. If we do what we tell you to do, we can do this. Guy walks out of the doctor's office and gets run over by his car and is killed. That's the situation here. He had a disease that is curable, but something else stepped in and killed him. And there's no problem with that verse. But when we're going to read, because we're going to read this section here, then we're going to stop. But what happens next? And he settled his countenance steadfastly on. Till he was ashamed, and the men of God wept. Begins to cry. Because God is showing him more, and the face expressions. And Hazel said, Why weepest thou, my Lord? And he answered, Because I know the evil that thou, Hazel, will do unto the children of Israel. Their strongholds will you set on fire. You're going to burn their cities. You're, their young men will thou slay with a sword. You're going to kill them in army, in a battle, in war. And will dash, that's the first time that word shows up, dash. Kind of interesting, a thousand yard dash, 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 dot, dot, dash, dash, their children and rip up their women with child. You're going to slaughter the Jews. As he and it is such a slaughter. It's not just a war. Elijah's sitting there, God's speaking to him, showing him something, and he just starts bawling. Because God has showed him all the damage that Hazel's going to do. And Hazel says, But what? Is thy servant a dog? Well, yeah, you're a Gentile. <laughs> yes, you are. The question of that is yes. But am I just so bad as a dog? That he should do that he should do this great thing, God. That he should do this great thing. He's talking about himself. He thinks it's, he thinks it's uh Ben Hay dead, but Elijah told him, Thou set on fire. And Elijah answered, the Lord has shown me that thou, not him, you, shall be king over Syria. Well, you can't have two kings. And when Elijah tells him, that, listen, you're going to destroy, you're going to kill, you're going to go against Israel. You're going to kill him. And he says, well, how bad is Ben-Hadad? And listen, after Ben-Hadad gets better, that's what he's going to do? No, you. You. And in verse 14, what happens? So he, I mean, Hazai, Hazel, however you want to say, Hazel, departed from Elijah. There's only one man sitting from Elijah, from Damascus. It's Hazel. It's not Ben Hadad. Came to his master, Ben Hadad. Now I got to read this slowly because it can be confusing. 
This is like when the person says, go saddle him, go saddle me the ass, and they saddled him the ass. If you read it wrong, and you try to make a joke out of the Bible, you're going to misinterpret the Bible. So let's read it slowly. He came to his master, Ben Hadad, who said to him, Hazel, what said Elijah to thee? And he answered, he told me that thou shalt surely recover. That's one quarter of the message. And he lies to him. Because he forgot to tell him thou shalt surely die. They forgot to tell him that I'm going to be king. Forgot to tell him I'm going to destroy Israel. Forgot that, didn't he? Now watch the zeal of his zeal. That's almost a tongue twister. And it came to pass on the morrow, the next day, not two days, not a week, not a month, the next day on the morrow, that he took a thick cloth, not just a regular cloth, a thick one. Look at his zeal. Not even 24 hours, a thick cloth, and dipped it in water to purely make sure that what he's going to do is going to happen. Because if it doesn't happen and it fails, he's going to kill. He's going to be killed himself. And spread it on his face, Ben Haydad's face. Ben Haydad would not have ordered somebody to suffocate him if he got ordered that he's going to recover. That'd be like someone going to the doctors say, "Hey, you got the disease." Ooh. Oh, don't panic. You do what we tell you to do. It's going to it's going to work out. Things will be fine. Well, oh, go home and blow your brains away. No. As far as Ben Haydad knows, he's got good news. Hey, this is not terminal. This is not going to lay me down. It's recoverable. Why would he take a cloth and water it and put it over his own face to kill himself? It's not right. And then we're going to read the response. It dipped it in water. And spread it on his face. So let's do it tomorrow. That's 24 hours. Let's make sure we got a thick cloth. It's going to do what I want it to do. And with that, let's get it wet to make sure he completely suffered. It is on the mind of Hazel to commit murder. And spread it on his face. Suffocation. So that he died. Ben Hadad. Who did it? And Hazel reigned in his stead. There it is. When Hazel and Hazel was told by Elijah, he's going to recover, but you're going to be king. He didn't hear the rest. I'm going to be king. You're dead. And he usurped the authority of the kingdom by suffocation. So. You see the news of verse 10. Ben Haydad, you, you, it's curable. No problem. But there's a problem. What's the problem? You're going to be murdered. You didn't die of that disease. You died of suffocation, which had probably nothing to do with the disease you sought me about. And what brought tears and crying to Elijah was, I got to tell this man what God just told me. And the fact is, I tell him what's, what's going to happen. God may have already laid on Elijah's heart that what's going to happen right after what happened. The suffocation. Now that Ben-Hadad's dead of Damascus, of Syria, Elijah knows that that ruler now that's on the throne, Hazel, he knows there's going to be death. There's going to be torture. There's going to be doom. From Syria upon Israel and for their sin. We just had a famine. The famine just ended. Now comes death. More death. Don't mess with sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. 